We know that our students have a ton on their plate, including trying to figure out what kind of involvements they need in order to sell themselves to universities and scholarships and employers, etc. Many of you have probably heard about the National Honor Society, and maybe you're wondering if this is worth the investment in not only time, but also the fee. In today's video, I want to talk about the benefits of National Honor Society, whether or not it's a good fit for your students, and what the requirements are in order for your student to join. Now, make sure you hit subscribe because every week we release a new strategy on how to pay for college without student loan debt, and that is what we do. Hey there, my name is Jocelyn Pearson, founder of The Scholarship System, where we redefine paying for college to help families build strong financial futures rather than ones where we're buried in debt. Now, we've helped families secure well over $10.5 million dollars in scholarships and we are not stopping there. Now, the National Honor Society actually does correlate with scholarships, so that is why we wanna talk about that topic today. Now, the National Honor Society, or NHS, is a society that recognizes students for merit, for academics, leadership, uh, character, and service to their community or their school. So this is an organization that looks for accolades when deciding who can be a part of it. This organization has been in operation for more than 100 years and have chapters in all 50 states. Now, I have to warn you, you and your student will receive tons of mail about various honor societies, there are a lot out there where they're just trying to get a fee from your student. So we want to decipher between those and the one, for example, that is at our local high school. Now, what are the benefits of your student being a part of NHS or National Honor Society? Well, first is networking. And if you want to learn more about the importance of networking, I have an entire video we just released on this. So you can find the link up to that in the bio. There are also lead conferences and state summits, which are great opportunities for students to meet other students, but also to build their resume and their experiences. Like I mentioned through the National Honor Society, it can give your student access to scholarships. This can be local scholarships through the local chapter at the high school, or it can even be national scholarships through the main organization. If you are looking for scholarships, trying to build that list for your student to apply to, make sure that you attend our free webinar. You can find the link in the description or go to the scholarshipsystem.com slash free webinar, where you will learn my exact steps on how to find those scholarships and build that list. Now, another benefit is that it does look great on an application. I will, however, say that if your student just pays the fee and joins it, a lot of colleges and scholarship committees know that that's a possibility for students. So it's not really that much of a benefit at this point because a lot of students, they just kind of join just for being able to put it on their resume. So it, they look for a little bit more than just being a member if this is the one activity. Lastly, another benefit is that this is an opportunity to gain resources such as tips on planning for college or financial aid or even leadership opportunities if your student decides to run for some of the positions at the local chapter. So there definitely are um, skill sets that students can gain by being a part of National Honor Society. So how can your student become a member of National Honor Society? A lot of the requirements are set at the the specific school level. So that chapter at the school. So of course there will have to be a chapter of NHS in order for your student to join. And every chapter typically publishes their requirements on the school's website, or maybe they have their own website, but it's linked from the school's site. Now, one interesting fact for homeschool students is that they typically are eligible if there's one in their area. Now, one of the first common requirements is that a student must be in 10th, 11th, or 12th grade. It, this can vary on when they start allowing students to join. And then National Honor Society uses four main pillars for their requirements. First is scholarship in the sense of academic achievement. They probably have a GPA requirement of some sort, usually a 3.0 or above. Second is service, so acts of volunteerism. Third is leadership, so both school and communi community activities can count. And then fourth is character, respectfulness, how cooperative your student can be, um, are they honest, are they reliable? So that kind of character aspect is their fourth pillar. Now students have to meet all four areas in order to become a member. Now you might be thinking, well, how do they assess this? Well, typically they have to submit an application and they will be assessed by a panel, including most likely existing NHS student members. 
They might even have to do an interview if the specific location requires that. Now, once your student becomes a member of NHS, there also most likely will be some requirements in order to stay a member. Maybe things like required service hours or attending meetings or paying dues. These are common requirements for most activities, but especially NHS. Now, this is something your students should seriously consider. Do they have the time to make the meetings? Do you have the means to pay the fees? Again, all of these requirements will vary by chapter, by school, so look into them, but it's good to be aware of them now. Now comment below, do you know what your students' NHS requirements are? Let us know in the comments because I think it'd be helpful for students to see what other chapters are asking for. Now one thing to note here is it is not a guaranteed yes. So your student might apply and may not be allowed to join the, the National Honor Society. However, if that's the case and they have future school years, they might be able to reapply in later years. Now beyond the benefits and the requirements, I wanna just spend a quick minute on how to maximize this if your student is a member. So like I mentioned with National Honor Society, a lot of scholarship committees do know, and, and college uh, act, admissions committees, they do know that you can typically just join National Honor Society as long as you meet the requirements and do the steps, and then you don't have to do anything. They know that. So just being in it will not really benefit your student at this point. It's kind of just like a qualifier for a lot of students. So to really maximize National Honor Society, I recommend your student running for a position or volunteering or being part of a committee that's organized at that chapter. Some chapters might do a lot. Some chapters may not do much at all. Even if they don't have an official title, truly doing things with the chapter will benefit them far more than just being a member. Not just to put on their resume, but even to write stories about, for example. So that said, it can look great on the resume, but it also could be kind of just ignored depending on how your student utilizes this membership. And remember, this is not the only thing that committees are looking for. So if this is something your student absolutely does not wanna do, they can do other things in order to build up their competitiveness for admissions and for scholarship dollars. So that said, we wanna make sure that we're looking for scholarships outside of this as well. So don't forget about that free training. It's linked in the description. And again, make sure that you hit subscribe because every week we have a new strategy on how to help your student work towards that debt-free education. All right, I'll see you in the next video.